Okay. All right, I'm going to read out your bio. Okay. Welcome back, you guys. I am already smiling and I'm excited because I have someone very special with us today and I think you are going to love it. Amy Taylor is with me today. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hi. It's so great to be here. How are you? I'm excited to have you. Amy is a dynamic American model known for her striking presence and versatile talent. If you watch us on YouTube, you will see just how beautiful she is. Amy's journey in the modeling industry is marked by her unique blend of beauty, charisma, and professionalism. Amy has graced numerous high-profile publications like GQ, L, L'Officiel, and collaborated with top industry professionals. Through her diverse experiences, she has cultivated insights into topics ranging from entrepreneurship and self-empowerment to sexuality and the societal perception of sex work. She is eager to share her journey, challenges, and triumphs, hoping to inspire others to embrace their authenticity and pursue their passions fearlessly. Oh, I love that introduction. What a great little bio you have there. And very exciting because we're going to touch base on all of this stuff. We're going to just go through everything. We're just going to shoot the shit, girl. Let's do it. Let's do it. So, okay. So I got to go back to the beginning. Tell me, tell me, how did you first get into modeling and what led you to where you are at in your modeling career? I mean, so like a lot of people, it happened to me. I, um, didn't, I was scouted in a mall at 14, like a lot oh. of people. And it turned out he wasn't like a pedophile or a creep. He was a real photographer and agency owner. My parents were very skeptical, yeah. but I guess I got lucky that it was for real. Um, I lived in a, a city near San Francisco, so there wasn't like a ton of modeling and entertainment. I did like runway shows in the mall and uh, clothing <laughs> tags on local smaller brands in San Francisco. Yeah. And um, uh, but it and so that was fun all the while during school, high school, and then a little bit in college. I didn't. I was so busy in college in the Bay Area of California that I didn't do much for about four or five years. But then I went to um, Los Angeles for graduate school. Okay. I did MBA in LA. And that's when I, I became very busy with it because I was in, you know, Hollywood and everyone's got a headshot. Yeah. And pretty common in LA for people, no matter what else they're doing, to also be in some kind of media. Like, mm -hmm. like this with broadcasting. Sure. Um, there's a lot of hyphenators. And so I did that. It, it kind of came at me. I had a a conventionally sexy body. Uh, most of that's genetic. On um, my dad's side, everybody's got a good figure. And then I, I liked to work out. <laughs> LA's got that kind of vibe in the town. So um, they they liked the way I looked on camera and I didn't mind it. I liked being around creative crew and seeing, you know, playing dress up pretty pictures. Yeah. Why not? Um, and it pays the help pay for grad school and my first couple homes. So uh, it's not very intellectually interesting to just stand there and try to be hot, but it's... <laughs> But, but it's, it's a work. Job. It's a job. It's a job. And it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is. I will say that. No, right. you, I mean, for sure you learn your angles. You learn a lot about taking care of yourself because you are the product and it's got to mm -hmm. look good or you get sent home from set. That can, that can start to feel, it can make you insecure and it can start to feel really narcissistic and weird to be so focused on your looks, but mm -hmm. that is the job. It is the job. Right. You're not getting hired for your personality. I mean, yeah, you got to be nice on set too and pleasant to work with, punctual, reliable, ethical, all that. But but you can't be ugly. So, um, and then, so I did fitness into my thirties quite a bit, muscle and fitness, uh, GQ, Sports Illustrated, all that stuff. Um, I didn't get the cover of Sports Illustrated, but I'm in it. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Oh, but, um, <laughs> but uh, fine, I shot- but Not uh, too shabby uh, still. <laughs> thank you, you know, B-list B forever. Um, That's right. And I shot with some very famous fitness photographers and that was awesome. Uh, and then into my forties, um, some it's been much, uh, starting to be much more about uh, fashion and glamor. Okay. Uh, and into my fifties, sixties and seventies, if they, and beyond, if they still call, I suspect it'll be more the gray modeling, like very beautiful clothing on yep. a mature silver haired woman who has perhaps had a little Botox, but <laughs> other, but otherwise is honest about aging um, because they're starting to put older people into magazines uh, to create more representation of a different type. And also probably because the purchasers are often old themselves and and Absolutely. maybe don't just want to see a 16 year old in the stuff they're buying. Yeah. And I totally agree with that. And I think they are really starting to do that. Now, I recently just actually did a little commercial for an arthritis commercial and I, I know arthritis cream and I was, you know, I put it out there a little bit on social media and I was, people are like, what you're doing that. But the lady that actually booked me for it, she said, well, we kind of want people to see that, you know, 
this is what they can look like if they use the cream. And so it's all different perceptions of what they're looking for. And these days, nobody really knows our age, where we fit. I go all the way down to, you know, I'll be like in my late thirties, I'll do some stuff in my early fifties. And I'm like, you don't know, I ain't telling. There's you know? a, an Atlantic article talked about the 36 year old face. Oh. <laughs> if we get a little done, not, not crazily, but a little, and, and we take care of ourselves that everyone looks 36, the 26 year olds, <laughs> With the lip filler and the Botox, they look 36, they look older. And the 56-year-olds also look 36. Absolutely. And, and that might be what they're dealing with is a lot of younger people are looking older too fast because they used to want, you know, like you said, you were scouted at 14. They want those young girls that they can make look older, but yeah. they're already looking older. It's not quite as good. For sure. I mean, yeah. medicine allows a lot. And so, yeah, you get to be the arthritis. And my yoga teacher is the vaginal dry dryness lady. She did it. <laughs> after. And you know what? Hey, it paid the bills. You get it. You know, a national commercial can be great. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, my son did a na 10 national commercials for Smucker's Jam and made a fortune off of it. So I'm like, yeah, awesome. Why not? Look, I mean, I, aging is a gift. It yep. means you didn't die. So it's good. <laughs> if you're lucky, you get to age. And like, dude, let's talk about it. People do get arthritis. Some people get it quite young and athletes get it. And yes, it happens when you're aging too. And like, I, yeah, I'm so done with like, everybody thinking youth is better. I mean, very few people in my circle do. I was never attracted to young looking men. I, yeah. I like a silver Fox with a couple lines. I like the character. I think a lot of women do. Yeah. And oh, I do too. every day by men of all ages. Like I am, there is a vibrant world for women. My girlfriends that are a decade older than me are doing just fine. If they are delightfully alive, vibrant, fun, all the things anybody would want to be around when they're dating. Yep. No exactly. one cares if they're 65. The the yep. trait ascribed to youthfulness, like joyousness, curiosity, liveliness, mm -hmm. needn't be ascribed to the young. There is nothing about being older, which means you can't be those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So what's the oldest you've dated? Uh, well, <laughs> I don't date him anymore, but he, he moved back to England. He was fabulous, intelligent, but he's now like 82. I'm 47. I dated him when he was like late sixties. Wow. Uh, so uh, you would have been in your twenties. Yeah. Like, late twenties. Yeah, maybe he was like 70. I don't I was about 30-ish. Yeah. So yeah, sorry. So, last minute math, whatever it was. Yeah. He was old, like a lot older, but dashing. Uh British uh had founded a very well-known American company with his buddies. Mm -hmm. Um wasn't greedy and shady, so had poured resources back in the company that made it one of one of this country's better companies. Mm -hmm. Um a good dude mm -hmm. and um, very fit surfed mm -hmm. all the time ran uh dressed beautifully uh yeah he had veneers because the wanted bigger whiter teeth that's fine <laughs> that's okay he looked great <laughs> um, adventures it's okay <laughs> and he was really fun he wanted to go to an edm party once and yes he was older than everybody there but no one cared no uh, so yeah. was it about with him? I mean, it makes sense because he's dashing. You said he had all of the right things. Uh, you know, would it be more, because we tend to, we obviously want somebody that has security and, and gives us safety. It doesn't need to be this huge financial safety oh, and security. Rich. But like, <laughs> you're like, oh no, he was rich. I'm, I'm My father's mother is Jewish. So I'm 25% ethnically Jewish. I'm Episcopal, I guess, if I was religious, because that's what my mom is. But I don't like broke men. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the 25% Jewish. I joke, racial stereotypes. Don't at me, internet. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so would you date older? Okay, so if now you would date a man that was in his 70s because, okay, if you weren't financially secure and he had money, but he was like, yeah, like a five, you'd be like- I don't, I don't care if men are good looking. It's nice if they are. I care about one thing, how a man treats me. That's okay. it. Okay, love it. I don't care. I've dated tall, short, fat, thin- um, and the reason I prefer rich men is because I like nice stuff and I don't want to pay for everything. True. I don't want to go broke. I mean, nope. I want to be an old bag lady. <laughs> also, uh, I have dated rich men and no, they have to be nice and wonderful. Also, I would never date a rich guy who's a jerk. Yeah, right, right. I've, um, I've turned down many who were as uh, a billionaire once who was an idiot and annoying. And I, I stopped dating him. Yeah. Because the money just doesn't matter at that point. Wow, no, life is too short for that. However, if a guy is wonderful, which many of them are, I tend to like brilliant, successful men, which uh -huh. sometimes the money comes with that. Typically it does. Not always. They could be like a professor or a teacher, brilliant, successful, but not rich. That'd be okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been to some of the places that only money can buy. They're they're better. I'm sorry. Yes. They are. 
<laughs> Amandiri in Utah is the prettiest hotel probably in the world, certainly in this country. It ain't cheap and I can't afford it and I like it. So I find a man who can. <laughs> it's romantic. And, and also, look, I mean, it's very recent that women have had our own money. It's what, yeah. 60 years in, in tiny scale and 25 years in large scale that women... Yeah. There are now women who make more than their partner. My sister makes more than her husband, but that is inc that is very recent. Yeah. And so the man providing is actually normal for all of human history. Uh, yeah. It's what I grew up with. My father provided, my mother didn't work. Mm -hmm. I Within my lifetime, women could not get a credit card or a mortgage without a male co-signer. That's within my life. Yeah. So like, I, I don't apologize after 30,000 years of women not having our own money or preferring a man who has who can provide given that they have hoarded power and wealth for all of human history. Yeah. If women were the rich ones, sure, we'd pay for everything because we'd be the ones with all the cash. But we're not. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> well, I, I'm certainly I'm not. I'm I wish I was, yeah. but but it's um, sexy too. It's it, a man that has and he doesn't have to be a billionaire or whatever, you know, when he can take care of you, <laughs> you're like uh, you know, but if he can take care of you and you have a nice life with him and you feel secure and taking care of that is that's sexy to me very or, sexy um, some women hate it they yeah. they like to go 50 50 because they feel more empowered and you know what that's me. perfectly cool too that's great there are men i live in manhattan new york and there are a lot of men who really like hard charging career chicks who make just as much as them and that's fine yeah. cool i'm not that lady i i'm a little softer more feminine i've run a business but i'm not made to be a ceo uh type and, oh and I don't apologize for that. And for the men who don't like me, cool. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> a billion other ones you can choose from. We're good. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't know why so, it makes people mad. If I said I liked brunette men, nobody would yeah. get as angry. No, but because you like rich men, that's like. <laughs> when most women do. And I, I assume it's just men who are not rich who are like well that sucks because I couldn't have her but do they even know they'd want me they might not even like me I'm very annoying <laughs> so, um, I, the idea that all women you're entitled to and should be able to have is an odd premise to me that anyway. is very odd people have the right to their preferences they like tall they like thin they like successful whatever so yeah. um I'm yeah. I, category. Yeah. I felt that too. You know, I, I would put on a, like a dating profile that I like tall and I'm like, sorry, not sorry, but people, I was getting a little backlash, like, Oh, sure really? that's right. exactly. And you're like, yeah. you know what it is? It is what it is. It's just like them saying they like brunettes over blondes. I prefer a tall guy. I'm a tall girl. Makes it a little bit more even. I don't know. Are you? Yeah. You want to wear heels? You should yeah. have told him, get down glue stick. You're not tall enough. <laughs> yeah. Down. And it's not like I haven't tried. It just doesn't match up. I have long limbs. And so, you know, it's great. If you're sitting at the bar, you're laying in bed, but you stand up and now you're like all lopsided. I'm like, it doesn't feel right. It just doesn't feel right. You have every right yeah. to be attracted. And frankly, 99% of women like tall men. So you are. Mm -hmm. I know. And, and the, the short ones are stealing them all because there's nothing left for me. I'm like, what does a five foot three girl need a six, two guy for? I mean, that's ridiculous. I tell you five, nine. Oh, lucky. Lovely. Yeah. What Jolly. are you? I'm five, six barefoot. And that sucks. <laughs> that's why like editorial and runway ended because I didn't keep growing. My sister's five eleven, and the whole family's tall. I don't I, I, something bad happened with me, but I'm very envious that you're tall, but for real. Also, if you date a really short guy, Sometimes they start getting weird about your height and you, yeah. you're not allowed to wear heel. They keep bitching at you to wear flats. Your posture caves oh, in yeah. to accommodate the ego. I've been there with, you know, and that's a hassle. Like, it's kind of like making more money than your men. Some guys are okay with it and some will hate you for it. So Absolutely. like, do, pick one. I mean- you see, sometimes you see these really rich New York guys with like a runway model and the guy's really short. Oh, yeah. It's like, you go, sir. You're going to get some better DNA in that family tree. Good job. Yeah, you got this. I always see that with that. I think it's Jason Oppenheimer, the, you know, real estate guy. And he's very short. They're twins. I want to say he's like five. He's right in there. The five, 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 six, I think. And he's always got these tall women. And I'm like, it just looks like you're her child at times. I mean, it's just so odd. Totally. To so how, okay, we're going to go there. Yeah. How are you going to 69? I <laughs> I mean, kind of an overrated act, let's be honest. It's pretty hard to have an orgasm with a penis in your mouth. If you're really coming, it's just going to lay in there like a thermometer. Totally. You got to scoot up and do it and scoot back. Let her do it. He's just scoot staring up. right at your butthole and all that. Like, fine. 
But if you don't match, like if your torso is longer, then your snatch is like up at his scalp or you're so just weird. way down by his balls. I don't, it's not going to, it's not, or you're like, you have to do cat, cat pose, like in yoga the whole time. It's just I'm not a hunched back. <laughs> yeah. It's going to hurt. You're going to have to get a massage after all that. It's not going to be good. Not and, yeah, 69 so, becomes 59 real quick. <laughs> I tried to date a very short man who I would have, he was cute and yes, successful and brilliant and funny, but he had issues with being short. I stopped dating him because uh, he had a lot of anger toward women because of getting rejected for being short. Yep. And it came out sexually. He wanted to hurt women and that doesn't fly with me. No. Uh, I, I like BDSM, a little kink, but yeah. um, I became afraid to continue and dumped him and I wish him the best, mm. but it's not, he's not for me. Mm. Um, he got drunk once and was like, I just, I just hate them. Like it came out like, right. Ooh, you saw that other side. Yeah. Well, and during sex a couple of times when he tried to be like super dominant. Yeah. Five of like, yeah, I feel like you're my son. Like you're, it's not <laughs> giggling through it. <laughs> if I'm to, like, oh, I'm submissive and okay, sir. Like it's, <laughs> I guess I'm not a good enough method actress because <laughs> in, yeah, it's pretty hard to be submissive to a guy whose ass you could beat if you had to. Oh. <laughs> like, dude, I weigh more than you, sir. Were you just like, right? you were so cute. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's terrible. I hope he doesn't watch this. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Honestly, he was brilliant, super rich and successful and lovely. He should just date like five feet tall women and then it yeah. would work out for him. <laughs> <laughs> but they're always the ones that want the taller women. That's like their thing because it wants, wants to make them feel like they're bigger. And yeah, I can get this beautiful six foot tall woman. And you're like, people are kind of laughing a little. <laughs> I mean, well, there's that Shiva destructive energy of men. They, they often like to conquer and the, the Buddha, the Hindus call Shiva. Like they like to take something and then change or destroy it so like the caged bird they like a, they say they want a career woman but then yeah. when they get her pregnant and have kids they want her to retire they exactly. say they don't like gold diggers but they hate women who make more they say they want tall women but then they don't want you then they want you to wear flats and they're pissed off the whole time like there is this kind of energy in a lot of men that they want to remold you just to sort of see if they can obtain control yeah and and i'm not saying women don't do that as well a lot of times we'll say we want the guy who works a lot and then we'll complain he's not home or totally. we'll say we want the good looking guy, but then we're mad that other women stare at him. Or, I mean, everyone's an entitled infant who wants everything. So true. Right? <laughs> so true. I do that all the time. I say those same things and my girlfriend, I'll go, yeah, but remember you like the guy that's really successful and for him to be successful, he's not going to be totally available to you at all times. I'm like, okay, mm. you're right. You're right. There's something. Oh, yeah. I like rich guys, And then I complain that they can have any woman they want. <laughs> I mean, duh. can't have it both ways, Amy. <laughs> That's all good though. So, okay. So going back to your modeling, we kind of veered off there, which I love. It's great. Uh, going back to the modeling. So tell me, do you have some like funny stories, any good stories of being on the modeling set? Anything you want to share? I mean, that? sure. Like, I mean, oh God. <laughs> That's it. Good face photographer. He <laughs> wait, do we have I, labels, names for everybody? I do yeah, that you for know guys what? updated. This, but... this is not all of it's true. Okay. He would he couldn't come after me, and all of it's true. And he knows, everybody knows. Facts he uh, came to LA. We had a shoot. He was late. He didn't have any of his equipment, said it got holed up in travel. Well, dude, that's your job to like take a flight with enough backup flights that your gear gets here. Yeah. Uh shot mediocre photos. Uh, spent the entire time talking about how he was also a model and that models liked to shoot porn with him and then have sex with him after the shoot. What? Yeah, this guy looked like a like a like a donut. He did not look like a model. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he had one too many donuts. <laughs> he was the before model. Um, delusional. Started showing pictures of like various models he said he had slept with. Oh, okay, sure, dude. I ended up. <laughs> throwing the makeup artist a hundred dollar bill to um, not leave when we wrapped yeah to not leave set until I was ready to also go oh that's funny so that I would not be alone with this douchebag yeah and, uh and then yeah the post-production of the photos they were fine b minus photos he was not a total failure but yeah. he uh has hated me and blocked me for telling the world that he was a sleazebag and, and many other models know about him but 
I was shot in Vegas by a guy who, uh, Justin, who did too many steroids and got, we were driving out in the desert to get the good light on this side of a mountain kind of, and yeah. makeup artist, wardrobe stylist, me, him. And he was like in roid rage. He was like a little muscly guy. <laughs> He'd been banned from Australia for trying to bring his like cold pack of roids in. And, <laughs> and he couldn't, he couldn't shoot models in Australia anymore. He said, I don't know how that worked out for him. Paperwork wise. Wow. But, he got like psychotic road rage in the car and we were legit all terrified of him. Uh, the good thing was he was little, so we probably could have taken him if it had gotten worse, but he survived. <laughs> he did okay. Uh, oh my God, things are funny. Oh, uh, like my favorite photographer, Ryan Dwyer in LA, the first time I met him, I didn't know what to make of him because he's this big, tall, like six foot six surfer, stoner kind of guy. And my mistake, I was like, this guy can't be this good. Yeah. And he is the nicest man. He's utterly devoted to his stunning former model wife. Mm. Not former. She could still model if she wanted. She's just busy because they got a bunch of kids. Yeah. And he he's around stunning women all day. He's never a creep. Does an amazing job. His photos always get published. Editors love them. Wow. He never makes drama. He's easygoing. Um dude, he's the best guy. And I remember the first shoot I met him, I was like, oh no, but I was totally wrong. Love he's that. Just so, he's so mellow, like just like a golden retriever of a man. And, <laughs> Which and, that is sexy in itself. When you have a man that can be around beautiful women all day, you know, that's his job, but he just is so professional, does his job. You don't have to worry about him. Like as his partner, his wife, that's incredible. I love that. He's there to do his job. Yeah. He doesn't creep on people. He doesn't need to. His wife is more stunning than anybody. Mm -hmm. And and that makes, and he gets a lot of work because of that, because everyone can trust him. And uh, and he's deeply in love with her. It's just, it's kind of beautiful to be around. And they still are. They've been going for many years now. And I love that. I, I wish, and he certainly had his business hurdles and things over the years with, you know, douchey partners and, you know, like, like anybody douchey partners, but um, he uh, I'm sure will continue to triumph as long as he wants to be in this industry because, yeah. uh, and he's been a pleasure. Those are the best photos I ever took. We went for two days in death Valley, which is the desert light in the Southwest is spectacular for photography. That's yeah. why the film industry went out there a hundred yeah. years ago. Um, and people do their engagement photos and stuff out there. Cause the light just looks great. And uh we stumbled around Death Valley and took the most beautiful photos and had the most fun. There's still parts where you can't get any cell phone reception. So the crew, we were like in this little little tribe on our own for two days. And yeah, I'd like to go back and do that again because it was a spectacular experience that created the images that have been the published the most of any I ever took. Wow. With, with this great guy, Ryan. Oh so. my God, that sounds amazing. Countless other stories. I mean, creeps yeah. who try to sleep with you. Like I've been to the Playboy Mansion. It's funny and weird. Um, Ooh. Yeah. How, how was that? Okay. So funny, yeah. weird. What was, what that made was weird? still alive back then. He's Ooh, passed okay. now. He yeah. wouldn't remember me. I tested in Burbank for Playboy, mm -hmm. which is such a weird experience. They stick you on a stool naked with all these <laughs> lights crew and they just start recording you and they interview you. It's like any other interview. But but you have no clothes You're naked. On. Yeah, just <laughs> sitting there like, um, and I was not chosen to be uh, on the cover or in the U.S. Playboy. That's the ultimate get. I'm not quite. I'm pretty, but I'm not quite pretty enough. Um, I think you are. Fine. But go on. Yeah. Well, bless your heart. It's but fine. I, <laughs> but I haven't seen your snatch, so <laughs> right. It might have been the snatch. <laughs> just, just well, I was a lot younger. It's still fine. I didn't have kids, and if I had, I would have repaired it. They got stuff. They can do anything in the doctor's they can do office. Anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, maybe it was too much Arby's roast beef. I don't know. They didn't like it. So, um, I don't know. I never see it. It's that way. It seems fine. I, I know. know. I talk about that all the time. I'm like, women get a, a mirror and put it down there and just take a look for yourself. I mean, to me, it's not the prettiest thing out there. You're kind of like, I don't really get the obsession with it, but I'm not a lesbian. So I guess that's why maybe if I was, I'd be like, oh, oh yeah, those are hot. I've had many men tell me it's pretty that I've yeah. dated. I think they tell anybody, I think they like whatever one they're near that they're with like, right at the moment. <laughs> it's like boobs. Like they like them all, which is so wonderful about men. They're so much <laughs> like than we are. I think they have so to be easy to please. <laughs> but I've done some laser bleaching and things. I should do that again. It's been a while, but it's kind of nice to make it more lightened up. But people, you don't yeah. have to. Um, I took off all the hair like when I was like 16 because of bikini modeling. It was just easier for different cuts. So 
I've yeah. been slip slide since I was a teenager, but I know, I know Bush is coming back, but me personally, I don't like it. I know it's in style. I don't care. So. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm like all about the hardwood floors. That's good. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with the Bush. That's just me. That's just. And I much. don't want to see if there's any grays, which there probably are. Mm. 47. I like, know. And I don't like a bush on a guy either. I mean, no, I'm just like, no. or any kind of, yeah, I like that to be clean. I don't want to go down on it, come up with it. That no. is not exciting when you're like, wait, hold on. I no, got something in my your nose when you're giving head. No, F it's bad. Manscaped gentlemen. <laughs> Most of you are, some of you have still missed the memo. Get on yeah. it. Get on it. We like we it want clean. That. Like yeah. in the back of your throat, like, <laughs> like a little hair <laughs> You're like, hold yeah. on, please. <laughs> no, no one likes it. <laughs> so, although totally shaved if a man's got a hairy chest and hairy thighs you know and, and then, then it's like this one on. bald area yeah it looks like like a bald two bald little people standing <laughs> on top of each other right like it's not like you gotta so maybe like the 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 two setting on the on the right yeah. the saber whatever those whatever guys yeah, you give them extra instructions here let them know what <laughs> what about know. a head are you a bald head kind of girl so god i've only dated one guy i'd have to go back and think but one guy that i can remember i went out with who was bald shaved head it was a cool look he was very tall and thin yeah and um had the the cue ball head and i thought it was kind of a cool look i prefer hair yeah but it's not like I said, I, I really care about one thing, the way the guy treats me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The dates he plans, the vacations he plans. I like a man who just says the jets gassed up at 9am, go to my yeah. personal shopper. We're going to Tahiti for a week. Get, get a week's worth yeah. of order. Where do you find these guys? <laughs> Internet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty honest that, I mean, if a guy were to ask me out and not immediately send the Uber black, there would be no date there. Wow. I, I wouldn't date a guy. I mean, but that's, I, all of that are small tests to see what kind of man he is. It's not that I can't afford my own Uber black. Of course yeah. I can. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not necessarily the material stuff, but I do think if a guy's planning a week long vacation with you and expects you to go buy war, buy wardrobe shoes and purses and spend mm -hmm. the stuff I like, that's going to be $50,000 at least. Mm -hmm. I think that's rude. I think yeah. that's rude. Um, and we do put in a lot of effort to look good for the man. I mean, the, the amount of time that it takes, we're getting our nails done, getting our hair done. Yeah, we're doing all of these things. That's got to be worth something right there. And, you know, they just want to show up and take you to some little play. So yeah, the trap they put us in is, first of all, we lie about how expensive it is to be beautiful because we're supposed to pretend it's just all natural and effortless. <laughs> and if we tell them how much it costs, then, of course, the response is, well, you didn't have to do that for me. Right. Well, how all the women you like are the ones who did. You mm. say, they all say, I want natural, beautiful. That's always a lie. Yeah. Uh, they want to believe it's natural and less expensive for them and free. Any <laughs> wealthy man who's in a relationship with some very polished, beautiful woman understands the budget because he's covering it. And exactly. In the, in the world of wealthy, the men would laugh at the idea that you would open your wallet because they know what it takes. Yeah. They also want somebody whose schedule can match theirs. If you've got three part-time jobs and you're exhausted, and they only have this time to go on vacation. Yeah. You'll never see each other. And when you can see them, you'll be tired and not fun. It's mm -hmm. so much easier for them to use the success that they have to make your life easier. And if they love you or even just really like you, yeah. they are happy to do that. They would never suggest otherwise. I agree. And so I think if a guy's not trying to make your life better and easier, I don't think he really likes you. <laughs> that's a pretty simple blank just, statement right there just, just using your holes to to ejaculate in yeah you're faking it for him and you're spending your money and time being beautiful him for what yeah where's what's in it for you dick Nothing. that's abundant <laughs> of low value you can find that anywhere <laughs> well and your clitoris is on the outside so yeah no we all like to get fucked sure but like i don't know like i think you have to look for the win-wins in life. And so I'm not here to be a martyr. I love men, but I'm not going to martyr myself for them because pretty soon when I'm old and unfuckable, they won't care if I die in a ditch, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. Oh mm. my gosh. That is too funny. And you've said a lot of things that I think a lot of women are thinking out there. So well, they I all love the that. argument. I've had, I've had hundreds of men. No, I'm going to really want you and love you when you're 85. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So, so, okay. Tell me about this. So 
you, cause I'm really fascinated because you, <laughs> you have so much info to share with us today. So on your website, you have on there that you are one of the most exclusive and unique models in the United States, which I love that. Is that a I think most of title? For, is that, who gave that? Most of that copy is written for SEO. So like, <laughs> there's a lot of weird, like, yeah, I mean. Like, does it say that? It, sure, I guess. Um, but yeah, most of that copy was written by my attorneys for search engine optimization. But Oh, uh, okay. perfect. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Okay. Good to know. And so what distinguishes you from like the models that we just see norm, like on common magazines, we've talked about some other stuff. So tell me about like what distinguishes you from them. Oh, I'm not going to say I'm better than anybody else. Again, that copy was written by my attorneys. I don't think I've ever even read it. Um, but, uh, there's a different, there are different kinds of models. I'm not an editorial model. I'm not tall enough. Mm -hmm. I've done trade show, but not in a while. Mm -hmm. the, um, I've done fitness, not this year. I'll do it again. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not fun to not eat carbs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we've done lots of bikini. I'd like to do it older and show that older women can still be beautiful, even if we a little bit older, but we'll see that might be over. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then atmosphere modeling, you can go like to a nightclub and be at a table and, mm -hmm. uh, either the club or some host is paying you and mm, yeah. yeah, they call it atmosphere modeling. You're not standing in front of a camera per se, but you're you just there in the environment to make the Better yeah. Place. So yeah. you can travel with people. I've been on like yacht parties in, uh, St. Bart's and mm -hmm. I was paid to be there for atmosphere because one of the things that companies or wealthy people, I was paid to be, uh, I was paid by a clothing company to go to the Playboy mansion for a charity event. It was mm -hmm. the clothing company that paid me to wear their stuff and be there. But essentially I was just at a party, right? Yeah. Call it what you want. It's, it's all under the umbrella of modeling, but, um, perhaps it should be be called presence or something you know there are yeah. there are a lot of companies and or people that will pay to have to have pretty vibrant uh delightful people around because yes. that's creative and fun for them that's pretty common right okay and so that's mainly what you do or you specialize in some other high level type of modeling that we haven't talked about yet um you kind of identify as part of the sex work industry yeah i've been a companion yeah. so yeah. um i don't like i said earlier i don't date men that don't provide for me okay perfect Perhaps I would. i'd rather be single <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what does that entail? So when tell us just a little bit more about that for the listeners who don't really know what we're referring to when we say sex work. How do you describe that? How would you say so, that? I think I'm going to get this wrong, but the sex work was coined in uh, 70s, 80s. Okay. I don't remember the decade, but I'm going to get it wrong. But you can Google the history of that term. It was coined to try to corral more power and get everybody under the umbrella of anybody who was kind of monetizing their sexual viability. And it yeah. doesn't mean that you're having sex okay. that would be illegal if yeah. I've turned down a million men who've who've assumed that their payment to me entitled them to sex it does not it cannot also it's kind of weird and vulgar yeah um, but it's also illegal so okay um but it includes strippers definitely monetizing sexuality mm -hmm. should not be having sex okay things happen I know I know a stripper who married a customer she met in the club and they have kids for sure they yeah. had many times and continue to but but uh, it includes dominatrixes, dominatrices. I don't know what the plural word is. I don't know. Um, Findom, which the kink is uh, that uh, men just simply like to give beautiful women money. And the woman derives pleasure from receiving money from men. And they usually don't even meet. Sometimes What's they- that called? Findom? Findom. It's a billion dollar industry. It's short for financial domination. Oh, and got it. Got it. The, the kink for men is the spending money. Yeah. And they typically don't even meet the women, although there are things called cash point meets where they can meet you, but it's always in a public place. There is no sex. Most fin doms bar barely let the fin sub yeah. financial submissive touch them even, maybe a hug. Um, wow. I've had many fin subs send me lots of stuff, gifts, cash. Yeah. Um, and I've never met any of them. I know who they are. But yeah. The, 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 the kink is they like to provide. They feel useful. Yeah. They, um, Do they feel like they in some way own you a little bit like they have control of you is that any of it i don't i wouldn't allow it and they've never asked for it they're usually submissive yeah. they're usually very much a worship relationship you're a goddess you deserve my money because you're beautiful and i'm beneath you i could never get a woman like you the the most attention wow. i can even get is to send you shopping all day and you'll just send me photos of what you bought um they do typically want a thank you and some attention some of yeah. them don't even want that some of them send you ten thousand bucks and you never hear from them again Oh my God. Oh, yeah. I have no idea about this, Amy. I don't know where I've been. So Why women you... never give so... away their power because 
Fandom is a massive industry worldwide. Yeah. Probably. Maybe billions, maybe more. I don't know. But yeah, it's hashtag Findom. Look it up. You'll, you'll yeah, go down. Absolutely. There. I know. Yeah. I was looking up sex worker just so I, you know, kind of would be more familiar. Oh, and yeah. porn is part of sex work. Yeah. Only fans, which you might not be having sex with another human. You might be doing either pretty girl, which is called, where you're just nude modeling and being a pretty girl or toys or not. Um, what else does sex work include? I looked it up. I saw oh. web, yeah, the webcam oh, and porn. <laughs> I looked it up. Webcam and porno modeling, stripper, phone sex operators. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one, right? I have a girlfriend who did that when she had babies and she had like 12 different voices for when guys would call <laughs> and she'd be this or be that. Yeah. That's great. Uh, pole dancing. Like, thing. While holding your kid in curlers and just be <laughs> like, great. yeah, baby, do it. It's okay, uh, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, oh. you're going back and forth. Yeah. Uh, pole dancing, which I kind of laughed about because I went and did some pole dancing classes mainly because I just thought, why not? It look, you know, it looks incredible for your body to get the strength, your core and all this stuff. It was much harder than I thought. So I have full respect for pole dancers. It was very difficult, but I kind of giggled when I, I saw that. And then, uh, erotic massage was another one. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. I know a couple of people who did that. Um, you're typically, yeah, hand job, maybe blow job. Some of them even do full enchilada probably. I don't know what goes yeah. on out at the end of the seven train and flushing, but that's- But you uh, can get that at the Asian foot massage down the street too. So, right? And they're not getting paid nearly as much. That's A lot of immigrants are in that space and the yeah. US demonizes, calls it trafficking. Yeah, sometimes there's abuse. Sometimes it's simply immigrants who don't have access to other forms of income doing mm-hmm. what they can to feed their children. Yeah. And trafficking. It's the person who's assisting them by getting a visa to come here to survive- Mm -hmm. demonizing that person as a trafficker i mean again where there's abuse that's a problem and it definitely should be prosecuted fully abuse is never okay yeah but a lot of them it's simply immigrant women they're making way more than they could make doing anything else they got kids you know this person makes as much as a doctor and then can be and works 10 hours a week and can be with their children it's a better deal than she could find elsewhere is it perfect probably not no but life is not a level playing field like not everybody's going to just go to Harvard and get a finance job because daddy has connections. Mm-hmm. Not the one it. So yeah, the rub and tug places are everywhere. <laughs> sometimes they get raided. Sometimes they are left alone. Uh, it's complicated. Yeah. Um, yeah. In Canada, the parlors are totally allowed. And uh, I'm assuming that's safer and better for the workers involved. Yeah. So that's interesting. So there's actual, even though it's called sex worker, there's not actually sex involved. So it's not prostitution it's not it can be it, it can, can be. be it can yeah, be sure. um which is illegal in some california i'm here in california it's it's legal yeah, what is it? two mm-hmm. counties in nevada rhode island tried decriminalizing it and then i think went backwards on that there are constantly cases all the way up to federal arguing for decriminalization and or legalization there's many countries that have fully decriminalized new zealand canada yeah. most of australia most of australia not all um other countries treat it a lot better. Uh, it's a problematic industry for sure. Yeah. Uh, even where it's legal, it's not, but that's a labor issue like with yep. any other industry. Um, but yeah, and there is, and there's actually a spectrum in prostitution. There's, <laughs> there's women who end up married to billionaires and yeah, it's a definitely financially, <laughs> it's a transaction for sure. Yeah. Or there's all the way to like street stuff, which can be very dangerous and, uh, and very fraught with abuse and problems for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I was very interested to read that within the U.S., the full service sex workers generates a fourteen billion dollars annually. That was really. I was like, wow, I wonder how they get that data. Most people aren't talking about it. So <laughs> it's an interesting yeah. estimate, but I think you could you could say any number, and it might you you get garbage when you shove an industry underground. You get garbage data because no one tells the truth. Like mm-hmm. they don't know anything about abuse because when you criminalize sex work none of the workers will go to the police to talk about serial killers and abusers because they don't want to get in trouble. So Absolutely. you don't get any good data. Anytime you shove something underground, you don't get good information from anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying we all should run around being like, yay, I want to, I want a brothel next door to my kid's school. <laughs> He's saying that. Right. right. But um, I think we can do better by these people. I know that being a high-end companion, I had a pimp try, uh, ruin, uh, really ruin my life for a few years and then try to murder me because I worked, I refused to help him make money. Wow. That happened to me. Wow. Um, yeah. which does happen yeah. when you're a model and you're high end companion and you're marketable. There are mm-hmm. predators who come for you mm-hmm. and these people do are able to do what they do 
Mm -hmm. because it's driven underground. That's how they get away with it because no one will do anything about them because they're too scared, right? Yeah, right. If the industry was legitimized, this guy would have been run out, sued, prosecuted long ago. He had been, he had been, he was a rapist. He was a gun trafficker. He was a drug abuser and he almost murdered me in uh, about mm. a decade, a little over a decade ago. Wow. And, and that's because he was a kingpin of prostitution in America and demanded that I indirectly help him make money. It was through reviews. He would charge to, to have people read. Yeah. I would sell sex for him. The clients would ask to write reviews. He would charge a membership to read said reviews. His theory was that we'd both make money together. I said, go fuck yourself. And he didn't, and he didn't like that very much. So he didn't like that much. <laughs> well, I don't like to be told I have to sell sex. To, Absolutely. I'm, again, nothing against it. But even if you want to sell sex, this these kind of people shouldn't be able to get away with abusing others. And he, yeah. and he abused other people I knew. It was a long story. It's in the news. Yeah. But uh, that is what you get when you get an underground economy. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. So when, so when I went into your website, you know, I was kind of, I know you have beautiful pictures and videos and stuff from what I could see in the, in the main section. And I try to go in and it's like, ah, gotta subscribe. I'll, I'll gotta subscribe. Password. It's, not, it's not that great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, uh, that's what I was going to ask. Kind of what can people expect if they were going to subscribe to you and, and go oh. into your site, what would they find? Um, so I started it before there was any social media. I've had a site for now a couple of decades. Um, I forget you could do a who is search to find out when I bought it. I forget, but a long time I've owned that. And, um, before there was no way to, um, share your life with people. And after I got outed by this monster, uh, I had nothing left to lose. I already shamed my family already almost been killed. Yeah. I figured I'll make lemonade and I'll show the life of one of us because I knew thousands of others that, yeah. you know, still were trying to protect their privacy. They might have children. They might be they're luckier than me not to have yet been outed. Mm. I didn't get that lucky, yeah. but I may as well humanize one because when we hide in the closet, the world fills the vacuum with lies. Right. Wow. And, and we are your neighbors. We're in your yoga class. We're at Whole Foods. We got kids in your school. There's millions of us. Yeah. And I know, I know thousands of retired companions and they're fine. They're fine. The only ones that are not fine were the drug addicts and they wouldn't have been fine without the sex work. Yeah. Cause they were drug addicts and that's what, that's what destroyed their lives, not the sex work. So mm -hmm. I have retired sex worker friends who are highly successful women whose names you might know in business. Some are wives and moms, some are not. It's yeah. so, but they don't talk about it because of shame and stigma in America and all that. So I figured I might as well humanize. So I put in like personal videos on vacation and pictures of me, um, uh, some stuff that was more personal that's not on social media. Mm -hmm. um, and that really changed. People started to join and see what I do. It's just showing up and arguably being a companion, being a good yeah. hang. And uh, a good hang. <laughs> well, I'm a, I should be a professional dinner guest. I basically am. Um, and they uh, stopped this nonsense fantasy that you're like trolling around in the gutter sleeping with a dozen men a day and that you're filthy and you're- Yes, that is absolutely the perception I think a lot of women have when we think about this. I know. And so I'm I'm so glad you're on here and kind of putting this to light because I want people to understand exactly what it is you do and how that is different than what their <laughs> crazy perception is. Same thing, same thing everybody else is doing. Yeah. Just just <laughs> richer, more successful men and prettier women who are cooler. Yeah. I, I think it's hope. I mean, I can't tell you how many women have come up to me and been like, I could never do that. And I'm like, no one would give you a dime. So relax. <laughs> you're not beautiful enough and you're not nice enough and you have to be both. So oh, ouch. <laughs> well, it's the truth. It's cope, yeah. right? They, a lot of men love to think that we are abused because it's cope. They like because the truth that we're going to Dubai on a yacht and the guy's treating us like a princess and we're going home and with enough money for a down payment. Yeah. That really makes people mad. And yeah. that is happening, not to all that's to the high end, but that's the world I know. Yeah. And, uh, and most and, people would and, do it if they could, if they were pretty enough, if they were nice enough, if they had all of those things, most probably would do it if they were able to get right into it. They, yeah. they can't because they're not desirable enough. And most men can't do it because they're not rich enough. Yeah. Um, now many women would not do it because they're only interested in relationships with the intent to marry. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, but I would argue that those don't always end that way and those things can break up. So there's no guarantee in life. Yeah. But you, you do have to be okay with the, per with the person who's paying you saying, I no longer wish to hire you. You cannot go full stalker. It's not a real breakup. It is <laughs> you also have to pay taxes. And this idea that we don't pay taxes, I wish that was true. Yeah. I've given many, many millions to the feds and state for many years. <laughs> I've been getting half my money for my entire career. Yeah. So nobody's, there's, there's stacks of cash. Nobody's doing things that way. Yeah. Uh, it's so, not true. So, so speaking of money, so I've seen, count, so, let me try that again. So speaking yeah. of money, I've seen some of your, prices that you charge on there, it is a very lucrative business for you. So how do you determine kind of what your rate is and, you know, give us an idea maybe, or like a roundabout of what you charge for something. Yeah. The market speaks. I mean, it's a few thousand bucks, which, you know, after taxes, I'm only getting half that after the feds and state take theirs. That's not, that's per working hour. There's a lot of hours that go behind the scenes. There might be travel involved. There is a fee for the travel, but it these inflationary times, it barely covers that. I'm not really being paid for my travel time. Yeah. Almost, almost at all. Um, so from the moment but, they hire you on, that's where kind of the clock starts. Like you're in a taxi cab and it starts with your travel to wherever you're going, then you're meeting them. That's the entire experience is what they're paying for. Correct. Yeah. And um, some of them pay more because they wish to, but it's not mandatory. That's up to them, but that's the minimum, bare minimum. Um, some of them 1099 me, some don't, uh, mm -hmm. I don't care. Um, can they do just an hour with you? No, no, it's, it's a different thing and I don't yeah. judge it, but I'm not interested in that. So what's your minimum hours? It's like three, three. And what yeah, would that cost somebody? Like, it used to be four. These are kind of these ADHD times. People are busier than ever. It used to be four. And I preferred that. Yeah. Um, but almost all of them are at least a day, maybe more. I mean, I, I go two weeks and say, I, I do lots. So like, I'm a great hang. Like I said, I, I ski, yeah. I ski very well. I can ski anything. I scuba dive and I scuba dive. Well, I scuba dive nitrox and I'm trained. Yeah. Um, I can play polo. I can play tennis. I can play golf. Um, so you fly I, planes, don't you? you know, I'm a pilot. Yeah. I'm commercially really? licensed flight instructor. I've flown cargo and charter. So, um, mm, I've only had two gentlemen who are also pilots want to fly together. Mm -hmm. They own little planes and we went up together, but that's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them, they either have a jet or they charter and they'd rather sit in back with me and have their pilots fly. They're not interested. Mm -hmm. They, they spend their time on other things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So oh, a day with you where they come and they send a car to pick you up and you meet them and you might go, you might hop on their jet and go, you know, somewhere and go skiing for a while. And then you're going to hang out and have dinner and, and you come home that evening. What would that roundabout? What would that be cost somebody? Uh, what is it? Eight grand a day now? I got to check my website. Mm. Um, and if there's travel, it's a few grand more. Yeah. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Then, and but I don't, again, that's my gross, not my net. So there's taxes. Half of it's gone. Yeah. Uh, I need to book myself a hotel room because I got to, mm -hmm. typically, yeah, if they can fly me out. But a lot of times, like if things end at the end of the evening, then I got to sleep somewhere and hop yeah. on Delta or American on the way home. It's, I've only had a few clients let me hop on their jet alone to go home. They, they typically only put you on the jet when you're flying with them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you, typically I'll go home commercial or, or oftentimes fly commercial and meet them. Uh, it depends. It, it's bespoke. It depends on things, but, yeah. um, and so their expectation is, is usually that they're going to get sex for that $8,000 or are you upfront? Like, Nope, this is not, I don't care if it is or not, it's not going to happen. I've left a few who yeah. mistakenly assumed that and yeah. uh, some of them have gotten pretty angry. Yeah. Yeah. But huh. I also ended up for years dating somebody I met as a client. And when oh. we started dating, we hashed it out what we wanted to do. Um, he still very much provided for me because that's the way I would live anyway. Um, it was just a little less formal than hiring me to go to the Super Bowl with him. Like it had started. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, we did have sex and I loved him. Yeah. And then oh. it turned into something. We had a wonderful few years and he's fine. He's in love with somebody else and I wish him all the best. Yeah. Yeah. But so uh -huh. people meet how they met. My mother was my father's graduate student, highly unethical by today's standards. <laughs> yeah. You just never know. I mean, the people meet how they meet. They've been, my parents have been married over 50 years and they're totally in love and I don't okay. care in a little creepy how they met, but Hey, you know? <laughs> it works. It works. Ever? So we talk a lot on, on my show about, of course, going from married to divorce and what that's like and kind of finding yourself, reinventing yourself why divorces happen, how to get through them, all of that good stuff. And so you and I were going to kind of talk about how that is affected by 
such things as sex workers or somebody that might have a sex worker as a partner, whether it's out in the open, it's secretive, whatever it might be and how that can kind of trickle down. <laughs> so tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Have you encountered yeah. some of that? So stuff? I do know, um, I have a friend who divorced her husband because she found out he was seeing uh, strippers and taking vacations with them. And I guess he was sleeping with them. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm sure there was financial, these were women were 30 years younger than him. I'm sure he was providing Sure. looking guy older, but, um, she left him and was qualified, mm -hmm. uh, which I understand there was no consent for yep. her, right? Yep. He and the sex workers consented by whatever agreement they had. I don't think he was abusing anybody. Mm -hmm. However, she had not agreed to this. Yeah. It was infidelity uh, to the wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's usually not the sex, right? Cause there's swingers and there's people who do whatever they do. It's the lie. Yeah. Why did he do that? I don't know. We all think he's a nice guy. Um, I, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. He liked anal and she didn't. Um, okay. so he have had needs that were, she he did not met. Kind of weird that that was such a big deal to him, but I guess it was, maybe she shouldn't have married him if she knew that. <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Kind of weird. It's just a, it's just another hole. Why can't you put in the main one? But Hey, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but that's, um, but usually once trust is gone, the problem in a, in a relationship, whether it's marriage or not, is how do you make passionate love to somebody you don't trust? Your body yeah. shuts. We've all been there. Yes. Difficult. Oh, yeah. And so then, but then if you don't sleep with them, they're just definitely going to keep cheating on you. Right. <laughs> so the dress is going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. you're probably, <laughs> you're probably just best to get at a mediator and do it as peacefully as you can. Yeah. I think men like that probably shouldn't get married, but I know why they do. They get a lot of status. She was from a very, very good family. And he got a lot of status from being the good married guy. It made him look good. It's great for his business. A lot of men, <laughs> probably why rich men don't hate gold diggers, because they're kind of status diggers. Yeah. They they often marry one kind of woman for status, and then they cheat with another kind of good time girl for fun. Yeah. Yeah. That is very common, is that they marry for the public image, and that's not who they really want to fuck. Yeah. I'm sure that yeah. happens a lot. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, the girl with the rich daddy and whose connections are useful. Yeah, this happens quite a bit. It's what basically was ubiquitous in Europe. Marriage was a financial deal between two families. It had mm. nothing to do with love. Yeah, yeah. So have you ever experienced that? Have you ever been like the third person, if you will, in a relationship that I they were aware of it? Or... This, <laughs> Mitch, Mitch was great. He was separated, mm -hmm. uh, truly separated. I knew lots of people that knew him. Uh, and then he ended up going back back to his wife. And that was upsetting. Yeah. Um, so I guess had I you fallen in love with him or this is the guy you were talking about that you dated. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, the one. Okay. So yeah, you did. Yeah. And then, um, a couple of times I've been lied to that the guy I thought was single and was not mm. a phone call from a wife. And usually they're mad yeah. at you and they're not mad at you, uh, because they realize you're not trying to break them up. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. If, once I know somebody's just trash and lying, you know, she can have him. The gutter can have him. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and do you oh, think, think, do you see why people, people lie? Because if they, they, they want the benefits of, of pretending to be who they aren't. Right. Yeah. Women do it too. We fake orgasm all the time because we know mm -hmm. if we tell the truth, the guy's going to think we're less sexual and he's not going to stay with us. So yeah. women lie a lot too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And do you think that there's certain knowledge that sex workers not even just sex workers. I mean, that women, maybe a third party in the relationship can bring into a relationship, whether they're, you know, married, single, divorced, whatever it might be. Yeah. I mean, so all things exist. Um, I know some sex workers who are married. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of understanding and openness. Um, they, uh, or former sex workers, there's a lot of embracing of one's past and entering a new chapter with less judgment of it that I think the overarching public could take a lesson from because you do have different chapters in your life. If you're a yeah. wild sex worker in your twenties or even thirties, it's not who you're going to be in your sixties. Yeah. I mean, I did know one successful sex worker who sadly she passed away. She was 63 and she was a light, a beautiful woman. She passed away last year. She was legendary, but it's very rare to even be able to be a sex worker at that age. Uh, because even if you wanted to, no one's calling. So, yeah. so um, yeah. he was an exception, stunning. Yeah. But for the most part, you have chapters in your life, right? You, you change either by necessity or the market speaks, or you don't feel like it anymore or whatever. So I think, mm -hmm. I think sex workers and open poly people and all this, like you had that episode could mm -hmm. teach 
more traditional people about being a little more flexible and less judgmental. I think judgment and rigidity usually stem from fear. Mm -hmm. lot, they don't want to lose control or they don't want to suffer shame or mm -hmm. it's always fear, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do agree. I think a lot of that and a lot of it, we talked about this before we started filming is like the taboo of it all. And a lot of women are very interested. I think there'll be a lot of people tuning in to listen to this because it is such an interesting topic and it may not be for everyone, but there's people out there that are curious and they may not want to do it, but they definitely want to hear about it. That's kind of what I found. I mean, the point is not everybody's monogamous. Not everyone you yeah. know, neighbors that you think are, they, they're they not telling you their private lives. Neither are you. No. You. It's important not to judge and it's important to be flexible about people's past because it can change. I know people that they were swingers and that didn't work out and now they're happier being monogamous or vice versa. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I've experienced open relationships and been very non-jealous. And then I've experienced relationships where I did not want to share them at all. And I felt yeah. jealous. I'm a human being. Um, I would say that the public can get very weird if you are either a current or former sex worker thinking that you some sort of have no boundaries or no right to respect or that you're sort of in some way subhuman. And that is simply not true. Yeah. Uh, Sex workers don't just see everybody. They don't just run around willy nilly, like having running down the street, sleeping with your husband. <laughs> In fact, the the most faithful faithful wives I I know are all former sex workers because since they slept around, yeah. they haven't just anymore. They're like, I did that. I'm good. Like okay. I, I like this real people. Um, and uh, so I think. Trust and vulnerability are hard for all of us, right? Trusting another human oh, yeah. to hold your heart and not break it is wild. It's kind of amazing any of us ever do that. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. But, but if you want love, you have to be vulnerable and you have to be okay with being hurt. Um, mm. I've been hurt and I would do it all over again. It's worth yeah, it, man. Worth it for what you get in the end. So when I, you have, I guess that begs the question, when you are in a relationship, do you still partake in sex work experiences with other people or how to, and do you tell your partner? Yeah. The, the last one, the one I met as a client and then we were dating, we were so busy seeing each other and traveling that I didn't have time to see anybody else, even if I had wanted to. Yeah. And he was still paying you. You said a little bit like well, not he was that. providing everything. Yeah. Providing. Um, there we go. Providing. Yeah. It was, uh, they didn't like swipe his credit card down my ass crack or anything but yes, <laughs> because he was so much wealthier than me. It would have been ridiculous. Like, yeah, why would he ask me to open my wallet? It was, it would be like you asking a child to pay for things for you or something. <laughs> Not that I was childish, but you know, the difference in finances is all I mean. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't have wanted, my heart was involved seeing anybody else would have felt weird. Yeah. Um, but, I, but then we only made it what? six and a half years, five, six and a half years. I got to go back and look. Oh, that's actually a long time though. I was sure. Thinking, I mean, I mean, compared to I what I thought, I thought we were, you were going to no, say, what I, no, no, no years. <laughs> yeah. All of relationships were years. Yeah. Um, but I might've gotten bored. Um, yeah. hit some limitations sexually that might've ended up being frustrating for me. And I may have wanted to sleep with other people. Mm -hmm. He may have wanted to, um, yeah. He was a rich guy. He had lots of access to women throwing themselves at him. Oh my God, his personal shopper. She was way hotter than me and she wanted him and I don't blame her. Mm, yeah. uh, <laughs> and if I had been with him for the next 35 years till we died, if he had wanted some strange, somebody who looks different or tastes different or smells different than me, yeah. I think it would have been okay with it. Depends yeah. how much and when and who, and is she trying to ruin our life or is she a sex worker where it's legal and he's not going to get in trouble? Yeah. I probably would have been fine. We went to London once and we hired one together and she was stunning. It's legal there. Okay. And no shame. She was, it was fun. He wasn't yeah. that into it though. We hired her for three hours and after about an hour and a half, he asked Done. her to leave and then we ordered burgers and room service because he was hungry. <laughs> well, I think sometimes it's just about the fantasy, isn't it? I mean, I think often the fantasy is so much better than the reality, you know? Or Sure. Yes. yes. Sex. It sucks. One person's getting waterboarded and the other one's freezing. <laughs> Unless you have the good showers with the multiple jets, it sucks. No one likes it. <laughs> yeah. <Being lifted. laughs> Unless that guy is real big and strong. Yeah. I'm just scared now that you're going to drop me and I can't chill. <laughs> like, so are you the type that I'm going to get personally here, but if you're in a threesome, you know, and you've got so in that situation, another woman in there, are you the type that's getting more involved with the woman? Are you letting sitting back and kind of letting him get his rocks off with her or where do you lie in that situation? I mean, all of the above. So, so typically, 
men are very visual. We all know yes. this. So, so they want to um, watch you with her more likely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, typically I'm thinking of this London person, Diana. She was lovely. I wonder if she's still Diana. around. She was on Twitter. I should look her up. <laughs> she was like a young Melania Trump. My God, oh, she was perfect. Dressed to the nines. Birkin, yeah. Flax. We met her at the Four Seasons at Park Lane. God, she was and lovely mm-hmm. uh, and spoke great English. Super classy. Expensive yeah. as hell. But hey, worth yeah. it. <laughs> um, and it was nice because London doesn't criminalize it. So we didn't have to be scared. It's so much yeah. better this particular thing yeah. I, I she wasn't trafficked abuse labor it sure didn't look like that but I don't I don't know for sure um but yeah she was lovely she you know stockings garters I put on mine too so it's a bit oh, of a show I like it he was in the couch in the living room and you know of course they want to watch it's pretty yeah I wish I it was probably really pretty I know I get it I get the sight of two women I mean when you have two beautiful women going at it it makes sense I mean Men, oh, not so much for me. That's just me. I, I, know, you know, I but, like men, but I don't really, I'll watch gay porn sometimes, but usually it's not as pretty, yeah. right? Yeah. Not, and look, we have the curves and the hair and the boobs. Of course, we're gorgeous. And I don't think I'm gay. Like I've never come from fooling around with a woman the few times that I've done it, Yeah. but I did not hate it. So I don't yeah. know what you call me. Like, uh, I didn't dislike it, mm-hmm. but it like get me over the edge. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so so we play a bunch and then, you know, guys get all eager and he wanted to join in and uh, <laughs> they're not ready for that. <laughs> yet, it was very cute. And then, you know, guys have two ends. You can use their face and use their parts yeah, and a lot more to do there. <laughs> find each other because they can't see anything. Um, and, uh, you know, switch safely, switch condoms in between because if it's a person that you don't have, if you're not monogamous and safe, you should definitely switch condoms and make Thank sure you. everything's yeah. Use lube so the condoms don't tear and, you know, all the safe, all the safer sex practices, of course. Yes. Um, toys are fun because that's a show. And hey, who doesn't like a vibrator? At least I do. Right. I um, do too. <laughs> I've talked about it many times. Sometimes right, right, the man right. itself. <laughs> yeah. No, everyone, Hitachi should, everyone should own one. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, and well, so, yeah, I think it's, it's very fun. Uh, I have, I have not been with a woman since that, but I was sure, yeah. for sure to do it again. It's, yeah. And women are pretty yeah and we we'll meet up after the show no <laughs> yeah what are you doing later <laughs> not kidding we're sorry kidding. I'm not we're to kidding. relax everybody we're kidding um so so something i wanted to ask you about that i noticed because i was looking at your instagram and that I, I was like oh she's got a lot of you know i click on one and i'm like oh scenery stuff and then all of a sudden there you are half nude maybe you know oh. doing certain things and i was like oh is she on to something here is that like a roundabout to get away with being able to post stuff like that on Instagram without it being t- pulled down. Is that your MO there? I guess. Scenery. And then I'm doing certain, like, so it's kind of like you'll do pictures, before. real cool pictures of like scenery. It might be, you might be in a hotel room and you're looking at the view and then you'll show the pool and then you'll show something else. And then I'll see you standing naked backwards, you know? Oh okay. yeah. That was, yes. that was in, um, in Southern California. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't think a naked, butt, um, where down. nothing else is showing and you're not fucking is mm-hmm. against Instagram porn rules. I mean, porn is a soft definition, you know, where they say porn is something you can't define it, but you know it when you see it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so I've, so I've done like sex positive podcasts. They don't get banned by YouTube because we're talking about like strategies and healthy sex and relationships. Okay. No one would call that porn. Yeah. But you're definitely talking yeah. about sex, right? It's yeah. it's age restricted because you're talking about sex, but it's not pornography. So me standing there against I was against the closet. Yeah. Um yeah. and it's my butt. Yeah, I you know, if they had banned that, I wouldn't have yeah. been surprised. Um mm. uh, but like every girl at the beach now is wearing butt floss. Oh, That's- I know, I know. Nipples yeah, are true. still banned on Instagram. Okay. Um, probably frontal. I find that ridiculous male nipples are legal, but our nipples are illegal, but they decided that that's a hard limit for them, that female nipples are too sexual and you Mm -hmm. will get banned. So, so I don't post that. Although I've shot in things that are a little sheer, Mm -hmm. you might might say, well, that might be a nipple there, but (laughs) but it might not be. (laughs) Some assholes reporting me like, dude, whatever. Um, I've never shot porn, nothing against people who do porn, but it's, I I'm not interested yeah. Um, and I've never stripped, uh, probably just cause I can't dance. Uh, and so <laughs> well, the answer's out that, too. right. I don't, I'm, yeah. I'm all off on those shoes. I'm not, I'm not suave enough. So I don't, um, 
but the the thirst traps in my body, I was feeling my body that day. And yeah. this the light in Southern California is beautiful and it was backlit. And so yeah. I there was a mirror there and I thought I looked cute. Perfect. Well, you looked incredible. You did. No, I was just wondering. I was like, oh, is this like she's got something going here that she's figuring out a way around this? That's what I was thinking or wondering. That's so. right. And what gets banned, like yeah, I that horrible pimp who I refused to work for. I've I posted that and it didn't get banned off TikTok, uh, but it did get banned off OnlyFans. Interesting. Um, because they didn't really like, that got banned on OnlyFans. That's but they crazy. thought the subject matter was okay. too salacious. Yeah. Um, I was I thought it would be helpful for people to understand that you can defy a pimp and you don't have to work for one, even if you're selling sex, yeah. which I judge. Um so yeah, I think mo content moderators, they hire these overseas teams and they're just taking a gander at things and deciding yeah. what to ban. I think it's case by case. Yeah. So, it might get maybe my butt will get banned. I won't be surprised. I'm not gonna fight <laughs> it does. Whatever. <laughs> well, that's awesome. So what's the max number of people that you would work with at one time that you would have as partners? I guess if you were like, do you have a limit? Are you like, okay, so I will set up, you know, having dates with three men at one, not at one time, but like <laughs> oh. in in a time period. Oh. I have a girlfriend who loves a gangbang. Good for her. <laughs> I had a chance to try that one time. Like there's a title I of this these two cute guys on a plane and they wanted to tag team me. And yeah. I, if you were going to do it, it would have been these two. They were like frat boy types. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, out of two family. guys. See, that's fearful oh. for me. I'm like, I don't think I could handle that. I don't. Ouch. No. Yeah. One, one seems small. like more than enough. Yeah. Not real. And it violates. I want one penis per room. I'm good. <laughs> Um, so I've been to orgies and I've, I've been to orgies twice and I did enjoy watching people. Um, one was a members only invite one, a lot of celebrities, a lot of very good looking people. I did enjoy watching bodies all over this room. However, uh, I didn't want to partake as a safety issue for me. It's a lot of strangers. Yeah. Also there was a lot of drug use and I don't do drugs. So yeah. I didn't feel that comfortable how everybody was on ecstasy and that's not my world. Yeah. Um, but did like seeing a bunch of beautiful people having sex. It was, it was interesting to watch. Um, yeah. but in terms of, in terms of my work, I mean, uh, I mean, it's, it's as semi-retirement, it's a very rare thing, but one of my friends I've been seeing for 18 years mm. and, um, and we're very good friends. We've been through chapters of life together. The other yeah. one is 16 years. Um, and, and that's more of a BDSM situation. He mm -hmm. likes to be, beat. I think he does. Someone like pain. It's good for them sometimes. Keep some, keep them in order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, again, like you said, probably something that they're just not getting at home in their normal, oh, regular no, his wife arranges it. life. Oh, particularly when his wife arranges it and she's there. I've known them both for 16 years. Shit. No, really? And she'll sit. So she watches and just lets you kind of do what you want to do. Typically I'm in charge when I'm there. I'm the expert. But she participates or no? Sometimes. 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 But they've gone elsewhere too. They've been part of that scene forever. Yeah. Way before, probably before I was born. Yeah. Like you said, there's so many more out there than we even know that are swingers and into all of that different kind of stuff that we don't even know about. I mean, it could be a normal person next door that you would have no idea. Oh, well, and the world used to be horrible to people who were into BDSM. I know a couple who was dishonorably discharged from the military when others found out that they liked BDSM really? because the military used to decide that that was mental illness. Yeah. And be sort of sinful and they don't anymore. Okay. But yeah. I mean, people get treated horribly for their kinks and fetishes. It's disgusting. Mm. Right? What's the uh, kinkiest thing you've seen? Well, that was in my personal life. Uh, <laughs> not work. Uh, like, that would be me. And, uh... <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I like everything. I'm, I'm very curious about the world and I'm very sex. I'm not sex phobic at all. Yeah. I, things I like that gangbang thing. There are things I don't want to do, but I yeah. totally respect anybody who does. Don't care. Weird fetishes, out. weird fetishes. But sure. I've tried a lot of things just to make sure to see what I liked. Right. You got to can't judge something if you've never tried it. That's, that's dumb and weird. That um, <laughs> I, uh, in my real, in my real life, in my civilian life, I uh, <laughs> went on a date with a guy who liked real pain. He, um, the harder I hit him in the balls, the harder. He the <laughs> Why does that remind me of that? Is it James Bond when Daniel Craig's sitting on the chair with the open thing and they're hitting that ball thing up underneath yeah. him into the balls, that would be like that. I couldn't hit this guy hard enough. And oh. I saw the harder I hit him, the more erect he got. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Oh my God. Yeah, totally nice, mainstream, Midwest, white guy. 
Was like, that weird for you? Was that like intimidating or a little off-putting or a, a bit much? Yeah. Well, we had dated and, you know, I now know why he was so nervous because to tell somebody that the only thing that gets you, so normal stuff was not no, no. interesting to him. And, and frankly, the reason I went out with him one more time and then decided not to great guy. I wish him well, but, um, and this is a long time ago now, yeah. but um, what scared me is that if, if his wires are crossed such that for him, pain is pleasure. Is he going to think that's true for me? Because yes. it's not. Yes. Is he going to want to hurt me assuming that I'm wired like him because I am not? Yeah. Um, so it kind of scared me. Um, uh, what did he go through to get to that point where he knows that is like, yeah. Yeah. Did he get hit in the nads and suddenly got a chub and was he like, was this like, well, shit, Howdy, that feels amazing. Do it again, please. <laughs> I've, I've never seen that. I've never heard of that. It's extreme end of the bell curve. And admittedly, yeah. I think relationships are hard for a person like that because mm. so many people are judgmental and it is so kind of end of the bell curve for what's normal. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how that is to, I should, I should look him up and see how his life has gone. But it was a little much How's for the balls me. doing. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, right? Like, can you imagine what those things look like at this point? If they've been smacked around and hit that hard? I mean, they gotta be like oh. hiding somewhere or <laughs> who knows? Again, it was, real low. <laughs> I and I don't know how much that exists. I yeah. have like pain and pleasure. Yeah, I and mean, BDSM is pretty common, pretty normal. Extremes yeah. like that are, I assume, rare. Yeah, but I don't think anybody knows. And again, it can change. You can be into something for a few years and then not. Um, oh, well, there's got to be something. I mean, look how well Fifty Shades of Grey movies did. You know. I mean, I admit reading the books, I was like highly turned on by those. And I'm like, oh, well, because he's a hot thing. billionaire. It was, yeah. If it was, I mean, there was, was like, let me whip you. Yeah. The homeless right? guy in the street, I'd be like, yeah. yeah. Applebee's but, afterwards and you're paying. No, no woman wants that. It's because he was a hot billionaire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's probably true. Yeah. Probably yeah. Jamie right. Dornan could wreck me, the actor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He could do, I'll, that's fine. I'll that's do fine. That. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. I think, yeah. I mean, as I've seen, I've seen a lot and done a lot because I am sex positive, I think. And, and anybody under the umbrella of sex work is, is probably going to see a lot of infidelity, a lot of sexual uh, deviance, yeah. things that are less normal. And, um, I do think anybody who's into BDSM, as I have explored both in my personal life and with work, I think we have good things to teach the, the mainstream world about mm -hmm. consent. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. everything is discussed in BDSM because, because you're doing discussed as you go through it, or is it upfront? This is what I'm okay with. This is what I'm not. And should you encounter something that you're like, oh shit, I've never done that. Or that scares me. Do you stop and have that conversation then? Yeah. Well, so some places it depends where, uh, it's quasi, quasi legal in some places and you can't really discuss things without entering dangerous legal territory. Uh, but in places that are more evolved and progressive like New York, yeah. Dungeons are completely legal. You can absolutely put things in writing, which is safe, safer legally. Yeah. Um, you can discuss it all, which I think is better. Mm. And you're right. In the case of the unknown, I haven't tried this. I don't know how I feel about it. You can proceed slowly with, you know, things like safe words and, yeah. you know, how you feel about that. Has there uh, been anything that you've been like, oh, hell no, not doing it? Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, it has. <laughs> do, you know a, do you know what a sound is? No. Tell me. Uh, it's a, it's a metal rod that you insert into the urethra and then you hit it and it vibrates and makes sound. Oh my. So it's like a, a inside vibrator that can just. For a man's penis. Wow. So, um, but you're putting it in the hole at the yeah. tip. Um, so uh, you can, you, you need training to do, ex I'm so sorry, my dog. Um, okay. You, for some extreme BDSM stuff, you, you need to be properly educated because you can really damage somebody. Yeah. Um, and are you, you're fully educated and you um, like to read up on that stuff and know about it all. You can always get better. I've taken lessons from seasoned dominatrices. I've done, I've been to dungeons. I've done a lot of work in that space, but I can always learn more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if, and where I don't feel qualified, I would and have suggested somebody go to somebody else. Hmm. So I think, I think it's unethical not to. Um, but I think the BDSM world is really great about boundaries con and consent. Um, they're, they're pretty great about that. Mm. We talked at the beginning before we hit record with about sometimes you want a little mystery people not to lead with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm of two minds where I do still like mystery and the unknown. That's exciting. 
Yeah. However, that can lead to a lot of misunderstandings and, and flubs sexually. Yeah. I think mystery and the unknown and exploring and not knowing exactly what will happen is super fun. Totally. But if you're doing extreme stuff, it's probably unrealistic to just guess that you're going to get it all right with somebody. Yeah. So. And it's your usual, I have so many questions on this. Like, I'm like fascinated by it. Is there usual like foreplay in these kind of situations? Or is it usually that these men who like the BDSM just want to get right to it? Well, there's often scenarios. Um, sometimes they have like a fantasy of role play of what it is like they're being punished for some misbehavior mm. and um oh you know like your boyfriend comes in and he's late yeah and he walks in the door and you and you're standing there in your leather and latex he's mm -hmm. got a paddle and he takes a few steps in and you tell him to stop and then you tell him to get on his knees and crawl the rest of the way and they love it he doesn't get to question you and then maybe you get a leash and maybe you tell him because he was late, he's got to be trained. Yeah. He behaves better in the future. And if he behaves properly, then he can reap the rewards, which might be that he can be with you. Yeah. Or he can have release. And if he doesn't behave properly, then he's not allowed. Because men do very well with structures. That's yeah. why they make that's why they make such good soldiers. Yeah. They like hierarchy and structure. Any wife will tell you they they're, they don't always do well with too much latitude. Yeah. So. No, but I could see how that could be a total turn on for a man that does like structure and, and does like to be told what to do. That could be like a total turn on. And it's just play. You don't do it every single day, all day. Nobody yeah. would do that. It's just play. Yeah. You yeah. don't get a lot of play as adults. Yeah. Life is too serious, right? So do you feel um, like you have a different persona when you go into these, you know, like I do runway modeling at times and I feel like Sasha Fierce when I'm up on the runway. It's just a totally different person, right? Is that how oh, you go into these? Yeah. Oh, I don't run around my life assuming <laughs> that I could be dominant over anybody because I don't know that they would want that. And that would be very weird. <laughs> yeah. When I go to yoga with my girlfriends. You're not like it down on the floor. <laughs> oh, and, and not all men want that. Some men would be very angry if you tried to boss them around. They're not. Yeah. So um, most men are very curious and most men don't get to be sort of wanted and pursued sexually and get to try things they're very stifled and their whole lives have been about getting laid only when women allowed them to and only in the way that women said and th that's all good i'm we we don't we don't do the raping anymore it's illegal and that's a good thing yeah um, but I think it's an okay place for men to have their needs met on demand in a way that abuses nobody, harms no one, and the other party consented for whatever reasons they chose to consent. Yeah. That's not necessarily a bad thing to deal with the male drive in, a, in an organized way because simply playing ostrich and pretending that the male sex drive and curiosity doesn't exist mm. or worse yet criminalizing it not only doesn't make it go away, but it causes a lot of harm. So when men hate themselves for hiring sex workers, they'll externalize that shame. They'll decide that the sex worker is a trash Jezebel temptress. She's the evil one for making me want this. And then you get like serial killers who think that prostitutes should be killed and dumped in a ditch, right? They think they're cleaning up society from these evil Jezebels that, that are responsible for their sex drive. Right. So shaming men for what men are is a stupid strategy that, that causes a lot of harm mm -hmm. again how do we reckon with the fact that when women marry them and produce their kids you don't want your guy running off with all the women in the neighborhood that's not good either mm -hmm. i think um sex work is one of the places that we have imperfectly uh siloed some of the male sex drive for different acts more acts whatever in a way that is complicated but uh, look there's a reason it's always existed and always will yeah there's yeah, absolutely. And there's a reason it's mostly men uh, that are the customers. And yeah. Whether the the workers are men and women, right? But right. the buyer is almost always. Although that may change. As women get more and more of their own money, you are seeing more gigolos. Yeah. Yeah. There was a show out on it. I was watching. Like, I know, Gary. Yeah. You know, the guy who owns Cowboys for Angels. I know oh, him. Yeah. You know, and, uh, yeah. I know a lot of very wealthy women are getting yeah. their needs met. And yeah. I'm, why not? So how did you... And I, I'm going to kind of wrap this up, but like how, and I, I don't think you fully answered this one. When you started right. you were doing your modeling and everything, how did you all of a sudden stumble into that portion of it and realize, oh, that's a different route for me. And I'm going to, going to try that. Was it just like one night that 
things went differently or what happened there? I mean, I got offered all kinds of things to sleep with people in the modeling world, but actually it was completely separate. I had a sorority sister who was an escort. Mm. So when I was an undergrad, um, one of my sorority sisters was doing it and, and confessed, told me one year. And I was like, I was already dating a guy who had just gotten out of med school. I liked, mm -hmm. I liked rich guys from the beginning. Always had <laughs> Give me a doctor. stank on me, I guess. <laughs> I mean, who would you date? Some frat boy who doesn't have his own bedroom or a doctor who could take you to Tahiti. I chose Tahiti. Doctor. And yeah. He was also brilliant and nice and smart. And he was only, he was only a decade older. He yeah. Was like 90. Yeah. Um, but so I was already basically a sugar baby, sort of. Um, yeah. I, I love my boyfriend and he loved me. He wanted to marry me. I would have married young. Didn't want to. Yeah. Saw that she was an escort and was like, oh my God, like that's a thing you can do. Yeah. And is that a similar ex escort is the same as a sex worker? Would you consider that the same? Well, she was going on dates. Uh, so I went to Berkeley in the East Bay of California and she would go like across the bridge and date these dot-com guys because the internet dot-com boom was happening. Yeah. And go out to dinner Sometimes she said she slept with one or two of them. Mostly they just wanted to go out to dinner and she'd go home with a few thousand bucks. And I was like, wait, what? Like, yeah, I mean, what do you do it? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. We all rest of us are all getting treated like shit by guys who won't even buy us dinner. They expect sex and they don't even call us the next day. Right. What the hell are we all doing? <laughs> she said they were kind of dorky, usually like tech guys, but she yeah. liked them and she was very beautiful. Um, She was a cheerleader. She's perfect blonde. Yeah. And she's fine. She's a, she lives in the Midwest now and has a career and a husband and kids. She's fine. Um, but I filed that away somewhere in the back of my mind and was like, what? And um, and so then this doctor and I broke up. I was in LA modeling, going to grad school. And I was kind of heartbroken. Also kind of broke with no more rich boyfriend. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to do that. That seems great. Yeah. Um, and in LA, some of it was kind of sleazy. Lots of guys expecting sex. I gave you this money. What can I do to you? Which is gross and not allowed. Yes. Yeah. But some of them were wonderful. I made relationships, went all over the world with a Hollywood agent, dated a billionaire for over a decade. He's wow. he's very ill now and not long for the world, but we're still friendly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, it was fantastic. Yeah. He's like just it. dating. It's just dating. Yes. Yes. And I love that we actually talked about this because I'll be honest, my perception of it was like, oh my goodness, what is all this? And is she doing this and this and that? And so I love, it's, it's still very exciting. It's not nearly as like, whoa, as I the thought. The trajectory of female fascination is first disgust. Yeah. What they're told. That's not your fault. It's what you're, it's the lies you're told, which are coped by a society yeah. that couldn't do this because on the man's side, they can't afford it. On the woman's side, they're not desirable enough to make a dime. Mm -hmm. So you're fed with lies. Um, and, and certainly at the low end, there is trauma and, and horrible stuff. There's a, there's a channel soft white underbelly. He interviews like street workers and it's pretty sad. A lot of the time yeah. it is, yeah. but my world of millions, like, like me is totally, it's not the same thing. Um, so yeah, the trajectory is first discussed and then fascination, sometimes envy. Um, yeah. sometimes could I do this? Um, I did a podcast with a guy once and he said that night he and his wife role played that she was a high end escort, uh, cool, awesome. Fine, whatever. She easily, she was gorgeous. She easily could have been. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it is, I love dating. I love travel. Yeah. I like men. I don't hate them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really like my freedom. Uh, some women have to get married uh, to find themselves financially free. And some of us don't. Yeah, absolutely. And you only go with men, not women. I mean, I, I met that escort in London. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. With but not by yourself. Like you wouldn't have a client that was just a woman. Oh, I got right. emails from women, but nothing ever materialized. I think mm -hmm. I would. Yeah. It depends what kind of plans they made, if they, what they wanted, wanted to go do, but, yeah. um, but it's just never, it's just never happened. Huh. I guess I'm not their type. That sounded sad. Why not? Huh. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Damn I don't it. know what other not? people have. I also oddly never met an athlete, never met an, uh, actor. I, I met people who owned teams and yeah. owned Hollywood agency type of stuff. Um, but I always met the sort of intellectual smart guy. I may have selected for that or because I'm kind of a nerdy professor's kid, chatty bitch that yeah. might've liked me. Yeah. I think maybe the athletes and the actors go for like the 21 year old blonde. I don't, I don't yeah. really know. So. Interesting. Wow. It was, a great way to meet the, it was a great way to meet the kind of men I like anyway. Yeah. And I almost married two of them. Didn't find by me. I like my freedom. Um, but, uh, I know lots of women who've married their clients happens yeah. or not. Sure. Well, just a different way of meeting them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. 
Thank you for being so open and just chatting all about it, answering all my questions. I, I hope I covered just about everything that the listeners were maybe wondering and wanting to know. And for sure, if they want to know more, they are welcome to send emails and I will get in touch with Amy and ask these questions at sure. info at from Mrs. To Ms. Net. But tell us, Amy, where everybody can find you. Give us some of your social media stuff if they're interested in following you and finding out more info. Maybe they want to do it. I don't know. I mean... I won't mentor you, but if you know, <laughs> I want everybody to stay safe and alive and to the degree yeah. that always, I would recommend you choose something else. Society makes it too hard. The yeah. way that they'll hate you is yeah. exhausting and it's not worth it. Learn tech and get into a tech career. It's smarter. <laughs> um, that said, uh, you can keep in touch with me if you, I still do lots of modeling do some broadcasting, mm -hmm. um, travel a bit, hang out with my dog and my friends. And if you want to see any of that, it's Amy Taylor NYC on almost all the socials. So I'm okay. out there. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. So before you go, I love to do a little from Mrs. Demiz fun facts. Would you rather game? Oh, no, I know. I know. So you chatty little bitch, you're going to give me some answers here. All right. So I'm just going to give you, it's 10 questions. You just tell me which one, everyone comes to mind that you would rather do. So number one, would you rather have a partner who surprises you with grand romantic gestures or one who consistently shows small thoughts of thoughts and acts of love? I think I know what your answer is going to be. Grand. Yes. Okay. Number two, <laughs> if on a deserted Island, would you rather sunset skinny dip or midnight beach bonfire? Fire. Fire. Number three, would you rather have a client who is very nervous, but respectful or one who's confident, but has trouble respecting your boundaries? Oh, for sure. The former. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Special nerd all day. <laughs> I love that. Number four, blindfolded surprises or playful role play. Who's blindfolded? Uh, that's up to you. You can both be blindfolded if you want. Play around. Oh, <laughs> role play? What we? It's like that playful role play or a little bit of both. Yeah, it depends what role play. Like, I'm not a good actress, so it depends. <laughs> yeah. you do well with the dominatrix part, so I guess that would be your role. I play. look like one. Great. I got this face. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna say role play, and hopefully, I don't laugh if it's something real stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, number five, would you rather have a client who wants to explore new experiences with you, but requires more guidance or one who knows exactly what they want, but is less open to experimentation? You know, the rigid one, the, yeah. the latter, it's just easier. I I'm, I'm there to serve. Yeah. It's not about me. Yeah. My real, my personal life is about me. I'm there okay. to serve. I like somebody who knows what they want. I love that. Okay. Number six, would you rather have the ability to read your partner's mind during sex or be able to control their senses with just a touch? I don't want to read their mind because they're going to be like, <laughs> Everybody always says that. Be, it's always going to be, can't she shut up? <laughs> so I know. I already know. So it's going to be- a talker during sex? You just talk your way through it all the time? Uh, No, I can. I mean, if you put a dick in my mouth, I shut up. <laughs> but, um, uh, the only way to shut her up, folks, put a dick in her that's mouth. That's like blowjobs. Mostly it's just the peace and quiet. <laughs> control the senses yeah and their senses are going to be that we're just going to stop and go get pizza yeah just kidding jokes folks <laughs> oh my god number seven soft whispers or lingering touches touch touch number eight would you rather work this is perfect for you would you rather work in a legalized and regulated environment with protections or in an underground setting where it's riskier but potentially more lucrative Ooh, yeah, that's the huge issue. You should do another episode and you should have two, one that likes legalization and one that likes decrim. Yeah. So sex workers, the the consensus is that we would like decrim. Mm -hmm. However, the legalization brothel model with security uh, has better outcomes of psychological safety, health. Um, so it's what a lot of countries do. Yeah. Mm, freedom versus safety. That's always the rub. At this point, I would probably go safety, but I'm middle-aged yeah. and- I'm not wild like I was. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd go same day. I've, got more, more I've got more to lose, right? Sure. Yeah. 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 Good answer. Number nine, slow dancing in the living room or spontaneous dance moves in the kitchen? Slow. Slow. And the last one, trying new positions or mastering the classics? New. New. New's good. New's fun, right? Sure. They might be weird at a fail, but that's funny. <laughs> Sex is hilarious. Sex is inherently hilarious. It oh yeah. Like I have the best. 
sex times when we are just laughing and enjoying and having a good time. And then you can just bring it right back around and get back into it. It's great. Of course. Comfort. Comfort. It's inherently a ridiculous act that no yeah. one would do if you thought logically about it. This and is so, so weird. Might as well have fun, right? If right. If- so that's what I think I love it well thank you once again for joining me this has been such a great episode and I love that you again were just so open and free with your story so thanks for sharing everything with us and for for being sex positive it's really important every time you humanize somebody in my world not to be too too deep about it but you really it saves lives because when people see us as actual humans yeah they hurt us less so it's important so thank you Yeah, absolutely. I think this was very eye-opening for a lot of people, hopefully. So so we'll find out. But thank you guys for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. You can find me on any major streaming platform. I'm on social media at from.mrs.2, the number two, dot Ms. And we will talk to you guys next week. Can't wait. Have a good one. Bye.